For my next instructional video, I'm going to show how to port old escape velocity plugs to the new version of the game, and I'll get into that shortly. However, before I do any of that, I wanted to do an introduction to the game because it's 20 years old this year, so not everybody's actually played it who's under a certain age, even though you know so many games survive so long on the internet. Escape Velocity is a space trading game. It's sci-fi, obviously, which is not usually my thing, but it's not really about flying around the galaxy blowing things up, although you do that in the game. Uh, nor is it a first-person shooter or a first-person simulator or pseudo-simulator. It is instead very primitive in concept, but is a much more interesting game once you get into it. You basically fly from planet to planet, you know, conducting mostly nonviolent missions and trading in goods, buying low, selling high. And then there is combat tied into all of it, as you'll see in the game. So let's play Escape Velocity Classic takes us to the opening menu. I don't know why the graphics were blurry in this case. This is the first time I've seen that error. But in any case, once you click, it works. For some reason, it cleans it up. I don't know why that is. So, new pilot, or new character, rather. And they give you a stereotypical, comical sci-fi name from Mystery Science Theater 3000. And then you can either keep that or replace it with your own name or another name. Then you can do the same with your ship, which is a shuttlecraft, the most basic craft in the game. And you'll continuously upgrade your ships and your outfits and everything else during the course of the game, which is largely the point. So we enter the ship. Once we've checked the dates and the specs, which we're going to know anyway. It takes us to the splash screen. For some reason, the splash screen only stayed up for a second on this run. And then they give you the plot. Star Wars style, basically. So this is basically the layout. You look at your ship from above as in asteroids. In fact, this was partly inspired by Maelstrom, which was a it was a clone of asteroids. And then you have the planet menu there with your commodity exchange. It's also possible to have a ship outfitter and a shipyard, as well as to refuel your ship on any inhabited planet. So there are the commodity prices. And then you also have a bar, a spaceport bar, where you can do various things like hire an escort. I know that sounds silly, but it means escort ships that can either carry cargo or defend you from attack. So there's a light freighter, which is one of the most common ships in the game. It's too expensive to start out with, though, either as your own ship or as an escort. The hiring fee is 28000 and the salary is 2800 Obviously, if you were going to buy the ship for yourself, it would be 280000 the idea is you're renting them, not that you're buying them. And then they have the news network, the interstellar news network. This is actually the only network in Escape Velocity Classic, although in Nova, 
they have different ones for the different regions of space. But notice the news reports are partly comical and partly useful, like commodities prices, of course. And then you can also gamble. If I'm not mistaken, this is the gambling slots from Nova. They never actually put the classic escape velocity slots in. And I win, which almost never happens. That's the whole point of gambling, of course. That's the business model. But in this case, I won. So I'm going to leave that alone and quit while I'm ahead. Sometimes you can get missions in the bars, too, although they're always special missions. Now, the mission computer is very useful at the start of the game because you can make a lot of money hauling relatively small loads, and it'll tell you where you have to go on your galaxy map, your basically navigation computer. You press M, you point and click your route, and you can't actually plan into star systems that you don't know. So you can only go as far as the known universe, if you will. So you leave the center of the star system so that you can engage your hyperdrive, or hyperjump as they call it in escape velocity, by pressing J. Arrow keys control the ship, obviously. Then you arrive at the next star system and you can jump immediately if the navigation computer is already set up. And see, I have to reset it for the unknown system there, though, once I've done two jumps. Here we go to the destination. Press L to land. Slow the ship down so that it's slow enough to dock. And I get my pay. You can see the money go up in the lower right there. And it describes the planet, same as before. Now, I don't have enough money to buy a new ship, and I so I spent 27 minutes running missions, basically errands, so that I can buy a courier ship. And this is, you know, my first upgrade. I'm rushing everything, obviously, because I only want this to be a short introduction. So I will call it the YouTube special, because that's what I'm doing. And then I will outfit it at the Outfitters, at this particular planet that I've ended up on. And I can't actually get all the outfits at once, because different planets have different levels of technology. But most of them will have basics. So an auto-refueler so that you don't have to manually refuel the ship, an escape pod so that you don't lose your character if the pirates or the aliens blow you up, um, the auto-eject to make it work automatically. The Meisner Ram Scoop is one of the weirder things. It does this junk science thing to increase your fuel as you fly so that if you run out of fuel somewhere, you can wait until it replenishes. Most of the science in this is junk, of course, like bad sci-fi. Again, there's a lot of humor involved. And then if you press P, you can get your player information, which tells you not only about you, but about your ship, including its trade-in value, because eventually you'll get trade-in value when you re-equip. So there I add some laser guns to it. And I'm out of time. Thanks for watching.